dramatic 109 kilometers of a special kind, the Strada delle Dolomiti, in the southern Tyrol. The journey begins in Dobiaccio Toblach. The health resort was already a sought-after holiday destination in the 19th century. The Austrian crown princess Stephanie stayed here, as did the famous composer Gustav Mahler. The route leads to the center of the Prague Sattal and to an idyllic woodland lake located deep in a mountain hollow. It's amazing how this region changes as each season comes and goes. The thick layer of ice on the lake is tranquil and motionless. In summer, its surface is colorful and lively. Alpine schools provide trekking tours in unspoilt pasture land. No luxuries here. Instead of cappuccino and a shower, there is solid country food and a bed of hay. Steeply sloping rock walls descend into the lake. Sparse mountain woodland imparts a fairy tale impression. Past centuries old farmhouses, mountain peaks tease the sky majestically. Whether it's mountain climbing or hiking, the Dolomites offer something for everyone. And for cars or motorbikes, the mountain roads pose a real challenge. Three pinnacles are considered to be the essence of the Dolomites. They are the western, large and small pinnacle. The large pinnacle was first conquered in 1869 by Paul Groman. The panoramic view of the three pinnacles is magnificent. Here, nature manifests itself as the petrified air of high altitude the fickleness of the wind and the blinding light of eternal snow. This region has spawned many famous mountaineers. One of the most successful is Reinhold Messner. Born in Brixen, Messner has conquered all 14 of the world's greatest mountains without oxygen. For drivers, the winding roads take some negotiating. The gradients range between 8 and 14 percent. Long, drawn-out curves alternate with countless bends. Cortino d'Ampezzo is Italy's main alpine resort. Visitors from all over the world holiday in this splendid town. The parish church in the old town centre has a particularly high tower. The church contains a wood tabernacle that dates back to the 18th century. The historical town centre of Cortino d'Ampezzo has a good deal of old world charm. The facades of chalets and hotels are covered with frescoes painted by great artists. 
Richly decorated and proud, they represent the era of the skilled craftsmen. And surveying all is the bell tower of the parish church. Both traditional and sports festivals are popular here. Whether it be the colorful herding of livestock down the mountain or World Cup skiing, there's something for everyone. The beauty of the reddish shining mountain is unique in the world. Crowned with peaks such as the Tofane and the Cristalo, 1224 meters above sea level, Cortina extends into the sunny Ampezzo Valley. In 1956, the seventh Winter Olympic Games were held here. The town is still legendary and famous even today. It's also a rendezvous for the Glitterate. The Southern Tyrol is a landscape that inspires the soul. For nature, traditions and country life. For hiking, wine and southern flair. The stretch of land from the Schlüterhütte and the Grudner Jok has been described as a pearl of a landscape. The path travels across small peaks and leads to a meadow of Edelweiss. The mountain journey via cable car brings the steep mountain wall to within one's grasp. The edges and craters of the mountain are clear and sharp. The gleaming blue sky and glowing white snow is stunning. Such striking contrast is only found in nature. The view across the regal peaks of the Dolomites is an awesome sight. This unique panorama, as old as time itself, intoxicates the senses. Numerous feature films have been made in this glorious setting. With this region's great stone giants as their backdrop, many a death-defying famous actor has taken the audiences of the world to the edge of their seats. Dolomites are part of the Southern Alps. Between Isaac and Etch in the west, Sexton Abac and Piave in the east, Pustatal in the north, and Agordo in the south. Due to the sinking of the lava floor, consequent flooding by the primeval Mediterranean, and a final elevation of the land above the level of the sea, the Dolomites were created in their present form during the last ice age around 14 million years ago. The cable car makes a speedy descent. 
a spectacular chasm sweeps past as the gondola makes light work of the downward slopes. The leisurely journey continues on dry, ice-free roads. Meter-high snowdrifts at the side of the road indicate the heavy snowfall of recent weeks. Snow chains are part of the basic kit for motorists in this region. Rapid changes in the weather and extreme temperature variations are commonplace. The Pordoi Pass is 2,239 meters above sea level and is one of the most beautiful passes in the Alps. The east slope has a wonderful view of the mountain peaks. At the Giro d'Italia, the world's finest cyclists fight it out over several Dolomite passes. One of the laps crosses the highest point, the Pordoi Pass. For those who wish to spend some time here, there are several first-class hotels, well-equipped alpine chalets and comfortable guest houses. Glittering and radiant, the snow extends across the landscape like an expensive carpet. The journey leads to a fairy tale kingdom of silent stone giants. There's an abundance of tall fir trees, larches, and stone pine trees. The luxuriant green of nature borders the smooth road. Dolomites were named after the French geologist Diodat de Dolomieu, who discovered a new mineral in Isaac Bet in 1789. The famous alpine radiance is one of the wonders of the Dolomites. Legend has it that the dwarf king Lorien put a curse on the rose garden that was situated in this bewitching mountain kingdom so that it would never blossom again neither by day nor by night. Fortunately, the Dwarf King forgot to mention the twilight in which the roses still bloom on the steep rock walls. And so, Catinauli, the rose garden rock, shines out in the ultraviolet light. Those who wish to follow in the footsteps of the former Empress of Austria, Sissi, may do so in the health resort of the Kara Pass. The Empress's favorite walk is clearly marked. And for those who want to relax after a tiring hike, the pores of the skin can be treated to a little self-indulgence in freshly mown mountain grass. In the winter months, traditional saunas and steam baths are available. Spring sends out its messengers. Busy bees are at work in countless beehives. They fly enthusiastically from blossom to blossom to collect sweet nectar from the flowers. There are many places where one can stop and take a rest. The car 
castles in the southern Tyrol are a scenic high point. They crown the landscape with their stately form. The mighty Torfa's fortress rises above the town of Sand. The library and knight's chamber are impressive. The wood-panelled ghost room is full of atmosphere. Now there's a decision to make. Should the journey continue up the Zeiser arm or go down in the direction of Castle Root? Both destinations are tempting. The dice have been thrown. The decision has been made. The upper heights are irresistible. After difficult passes and high summits, an idyllic alpine meadow will be the next goal on the Dolomite journey. Alpe di Siusi, the Zeiser Arm, contains a 50 square kilometer recreation area. In summer, hikers come to this high plateau, and in winter, it's popular with cross country sportsmen. Europe's largest alpine meadow is located at an altitude of 2,000 meters above sea level. This area of mountain pastures and dense forest contains 350 kilometers of hiking paths. Horse-drawn sleighs are at the ready for local excursions. The tough and hardy Haflinger horses were originally bred for work in the mountains. The journey moves at a steady pace. On the difficult terrain, the steep incline is a challenge for both man and beast. Enchanting and silent, the majestic peaks dominate the infinite landscape. With charming grace and noble elegance, they reach out into the open skies. In 1856, two English adventurers, Josiah Gilbert and G.C. Churchill, saw a strange line of craggy rock pinnacles. Both were so fascinated that they wrote a book aptly titled The Dolomite Mountains. It soon became a bestseller and introduced this fantastic landscape to the entire world. The Southern Tyrol is a true El Dorado that sparks the spirit of adventure. The impressive landscape is a peaceful idyll that forever assails the senses and demands a further glance. The Dolomites have been granted the status of World Heritage Site by UNESCO. A small section of planet Earth that should be nurtured, quite rightly, as though it's a unique and rare work of natural art.
Bolzano was built during the 12th and 13th centuries. The city is renowned for its cosmopolitan atmosphere. The Cathedral Parish Church of Maria Himmelfahrt was constructed on the remains of a sacred Roman building. It was built by German craftsmen from the remains of an ancient wall. The church's well-preserved interior contains a beautiful Gothic sandstone pulpit. And there is an exceptional altar within the Baroque Chapel of Mercy. The few frescoes that remain date back to the 13th and 14th centuries. The 62-metre-high tower of the rather modest Bishop's Church dominates the entire Old Town. The stone images and grotesque symbols of the façade indicate the great influence of the basic doctrines of the church. Mystic statues and the huge and weighty entrance door bear witness to the disciplines and also the compassion of the God-fearing faithful of bygone times. The fresco-decorated houses and 900-year-old main shopping street can be enjoyed in the safety of a spacious traffic-free zone. And for those who still have the energy, there are the banks of the romantic Talfa. The fascinating interior of the city's oldest pharmacy contains a marvellous variety of interesting artefacts. Winding alleyways and narrow central courtyards are a delight. Worn out fish slabs and a stone dolphin fountain a reminiscent of the lively fish markets of the past. Goethe Street leads to Dominicana Square and the monastery of the same name that was founded in 1272 but was badly damaged during the last war. The cloisters with their frescoes as well as the entire monastery have been carefully restored. The majority of the frescoes of this influential monastery church were influenced by the modern artist Giotto. A place of peace and contemplation amidst the turmoil of the city. The colourful fruit market has a warm southern ambience. Delicious fruit tempts the eye. And the museums in Museum Street contain a wonderful collection of art. And for those interested in art, there's more to see. In the city's Greece district, the parish church contains the famous Marian altar, created by the Bruneck master Michael Packer. This most important Southern Tyrol masterpiece is considered to be the finest example of late Gothic wood carving. This unusual journey across the mountain landscape of the Southern Tyrol is a superb experience in any season. 
an experience along the Strada delle Dolomiti.